Hello everybody and welcome to That's Football for your latest football transfer news and Neto to Arsenal is the big story this morning. Also Fafana to Chelsea accelerates, it needs to accelerate if you look at Chelsea's defence. Um, plus a few other things to talk about as well as we enter the last, what, nine days of this transfer window, a little bit more maybe, ten. Um, and I think teams after three games being played now know what they need to do and if you've had a good start maybe you want a little bit more to help you Arsenal and if you've had a bad start Chelsea you need to be a bit busy and I think there'll be a few clubs like that as well but look I was going to do a video this morning not about transfers I was going to talk about Arsenal and say that I really fear Arsenal and I think this Neto signing and potentially still the Tillemans deal as well is really interesting if you want the latest on Neto David Ornstein spoke about it this morning Arsenal's transfer priority is Pedro Neto discussions for over a month um, with George Mendes, don't plan to uh, Wolves don't plan to sell him. Uh, Arsenal would need to spend about fifty million pounds to sign him. So it's going to be very interesting to see if they actually get him. But I fear Arsenal not just because they've got three games and nine points at the top of the Premier League. Uh, we've been doing this channel for a while. We've we've obviously spoken about Arteta for for the last two years, and I've always been very consistent, even in the face of criticism from Arsenal fans with their Arteta, Arteta. He's a good coach and I could see what he was doing and I fear Arsenal because they're a very good team and you look at Newcastle getting a result against Man City yesterday, they were the underdog. I think if Arsenal played Man City at the moment, I don't know what that result would be. Yeah, Man City would be favourites because they're one of the best teams in the world, but Arsenal are a very good team. They give Man City and Liverpool a game at the moment. How long is that going to last? Will that bubble burst? Um, I'm sure it will do, you know. History shows that no team's going to keep winning and winning and winning. But Arsenal look very good. Now, the issue with Arsenal is depth. And this is basically because Arteta came into the club, parked the bus, won an FA Cup. It was a slow build because there were so many problems over the last 10 years he needed to put right. He wanted to bring his own keeper in, his own players in. And Arsenal traditionally have been a bit bad in the transfer window. So that, that, that it's, a, it's a whole structural change at Arsenal. And you could see it coming from an outsider. I, I knew what Arteta was with his time with Pep. You don't spend however many years with Pep and then play part of the bus football. He's clearly uh, a disciple of that style of Pep Guardiola football, wants to play good football, which are Arsenal are playing now. And maybe Arsenal fans, you know, quite rightly didn't have patience. You know, they've been off, not been the Champions League for years, but they needed to have patience with Arteta. And now that all... Arteta out movement just looks as childish as, as it did at the time. It was stupid. Like, th th you can't... You can't blame Arteta for the past of Arsenal. He, he was building something. It was very, very clear. It's now coming to fruition. And suddenly some Arsenal fans that were critical of Arteta are pretending that they've seen all or nothing and, and Arteta's changed. He hasn't changed. Arteta hasn't changed to accommodate the Arteta out fans. The Arteta out fans just didn't see what Arteta was doing because they just wanted to start another manager out movement, to be honest. And now they are... They're bearing the fruit. And you could see what Arteta was doing from day one. There's no excuse to say, oh, you know, he's suddenly changed anything. As an outsider, many of us have seen what Arteta was doing, and now it's coming to fruition. It could all come crashing down. I'm not saying Arsenal are going to win the league or anything, or even finish top four. It could all come crashing down. They've had a very good start. They've won their first three. Last year, they lost their, 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 their first three. Um, but why, why, why do I fear Arsenal? Because deals like this for Neto and the Tillemans one, I still think will happen. That's that. That's their only weakness at the moment. They play good football. They've got some fantastic players. You've got people like Saliba coming in. Odegaard looks fantastic. Saka already very good. Then you've added in serial winners like Sinchenko and Jesus. Martinelli's becoming more consistent. That's not to mention other players that they have who I think have done really, really well. But then you add... I look at Arsenal's bench and I go, that's where they'll be in trouble. Maybe maybe Jesus gets injured, maybe you know, maybe someone loses loses form, and that's where Arsenal will get in trouble when they've got to play Thursday, Sunday. But if you bring Tillemans and Neto into that squad, and Arteta always said at the start of August he's planning to bring more players in, which they haven't done yet. Players is more than one. If they brought Neto and they brought Tillemans in, that's two players onto your bench that are quality. Now they might start, but they'll push a quality player to the bench. Suddenly, with the five subs rule and the Thursday to Sunday, which they're going to have to play, it becomes less of a problem when you've got a squad. I don't think Man City's bench looked that good yesterday, by the way. I didn't think it looked like it had loads of depth on it. So if you can, if I'm Arsenal and I've got a week and left, week and a half left of this transfer window, I'm like, spend 80 million more, get me two good players that come into this squad. The squad's buzzing, competition, bench. We're going to have a great season. And I think I said this about Arsenal at Christmas in, in January. Man United, Spurs, Arsenal. I said, whoever spends will probably get top four. 
Spurs didn't technically spend, but they brought in Ben Tanker and Kulisevsky on loan. They got top four. They would not have got top four if they hadn't have done that. Arsenal didn't spend. Man United didn't spend. Neither of them got top four. I would say in the next week and a half, if Arsenal don't spend and they don't get top four, they've probably only got themselves to blame. If they spend and they improve that squad, I think they've got a great chance and they're looking very, very good and they are where they deserve to be and Arteta's getting the plaudits he deserves. So, Neto to Arsenal. Let's see if they can do it. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. I think it's a difficult deal to do. Um, but if the price is right, we'll, Wolves will do a deal. We saw that with Jota, didn't we? So, you know, Arsenal clearly wants him. Quality player. Gives them good squad depth. And I still think they'll go for Tillemans as well. So let's wait and see what happens with that one. But Arsenal looking very impressive. Chelsea not looking so impressive. Um, defensively, they weren't great yesterday. I still think offensively that is where the problem is with Chelsea. Fafana is apparently going to get done very, very quickly. Certainly by the weekend is the plan for the next game. Um, they need Fafana in that team. They need to put right Reese James to right wing back. I know Loftus Cheek's done okay, but Reese James. He's got to get, you've got to get Reese James forward more. You have to get him forward more. And Fafana would allow that to happen. I presume it would probably be Fafana, uh, Silva and Koulibaly. And look, uh, apparently it's going to be just shy of £80 million. Pounds. Leicester accepting that it needs to be done. And I think it will be done. It's a lot of money, a lot of money. But I can't say anything because we spent that on Harry Maguire. So, um, but Fafana is a really good player, a really good player. I remember looking at him, uh, what, about 18 months ago? Only just gone to Leicester and you thought, why, why why, are we not scouting players like that at United? So it was always going to take a lot of money because I think Leicester spent about £30 million on him in the first place and he's only been there 18 months or two years. So it was going to take north of 60. Desperation of the last week and a half of the window. You're going to push it up even more. I'm sure Chelsea have got the money. So Fafana to Chelsea will happen. I mean, this ridiculous notion that they were going to go for Harry Maguire. Um, no, I mean, look... Don't, it was never going to happen, and I, and I would advise... I'd love Chelsea to buy Harry Maguire, but come on. Fafana or Maguire, come on. I mean, Harry Maguire is Michael Keane. That, that's how he's played for the last 18 months, and uh, you don't need to go and buy Harry Maguire Chelsea, so I don't think anything was ever going to happen there. But um, I think Chelsea need to do more. I really do. Um, uh, Bamiyang is interesting and probably as good as you're going to get. Uh, I was on Talk Sport last night and I said I don't really think Aubameyang solves Chelsea's problems because every fan wants to play for the long term and Aubameyang's very much short term. I know people like Aubameyang, you know, Piers Morgan runs the fans cl fan club for him. But what I will say about Aubameyang is I've always really liked him. I haven't got a problem with Aubameyang. When he was at Dortmund, I'd have loved him at Manchester United. But my issue with Aubameyang is this. He got that massive contract at Arsenal and he disappeared. And that for a player who is in their early 30s is a concern because you wonder about the motivation. We've seen it with so many players. They have a good career, they hit 30, they get the big contract and it's like, I'm thinking about retirement, Football, you know, football's not the priority it was. Is the hunger there with Aubameyang? Because Chelsea, I look at that fan base at the moment and there is a frustration there, a bubbling frustration. And is Aubameyang gonna come in, bust the guts and run 100 miles an hour and, and, and go after everything and be the player he was three, four, five years ago. If he is, it's a very good player, but it does... Look, Man United are in this position in a different way, but Chelsea, I think... I feel for Chelsea because they've got a new, new owner in and by the time that was sorted, a lot of people had done the business that Chelsea would have liked to do. I think Chelsea would have liked to have been in for Nunez. They'd have liked to be in, in for Haaland, but it was just not possible with the, with the, with the sale of the club. So I think Chelsea will go big next summer on a striker. I heard that a few weeks ago that that's what Chelsea will do next summer and they don't even know who that will be because who is who is going to be the big striker next summer? Nobody knows. But um, for now, there is an acceptance they need to get somebody in and it's got to be short term, which is why they were linked with Ronaldo back in June. And I'm very glad they didn't get Ronaldo, but I think Tuchel made a mistake. That could have been done in June. If Chelsea had gone for Ronaldo in June, he would have, he would have wanted to go. Um, and I think Man United would have done a deal. Um, but apparently Tuchel said no, and I think that's a mistake because I think Cristiano Ronaldo in that Chelsea side, you could see how many goals he would score. The question is, can they get a Bamiyang and will he do it anyway? And if he does, Chelsea's season will improve. But it doesn't matter how many defenders they're by, they're going to struggle because they don't look like they're going to score goals at the moment. They just don't look... Like, I like Mason Mount, Havertz, Sterling. They're good Pulisic. They're all good players, but I don't fear them. I don't get the fear factor. I mean, Arsenal have got the fear factor. Spurs, front three, have got the fear factor. Obviously, Man City and Liverpool have. 
the worst thing I could say about Chelsea is I just don't get a fear factor from your front line at the moment and you you need to find that very, very quickly. Um, interestingly, Aston Villa were going to buy Saar. Apparently that's fallen through. Um, I don't know why it's fallen through, but it has fallen through. So I, I think we're in... Look, make sure you subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. Um, smash a like on the, vid on the video. And um, yeah, Wolves are demanding a £50 million pound fee for... Uh, for um, uh, uh, for Neto, um, but you know what? Apparently Manchester United have been offered him as well. Maybe that's uh, he is a left footer as well. So you know you do wonder why Man United wouldn't go for him when we're going to pay a lot more for Anthony. But then you know the answer to that question is quite simple. We're not the manager. Ten Hag wants Anthony. You get the manager what he wants, don't you? And I think that's a, a principle of what's worked well for Arsenal and Arteta. They've got him the players that he wants, and lo and behold, it started to work. Um, you know, I don't think Sinchenko and Jesus were the most glamorous signings, but he knows those players. He knows they'll fit, knows they'll fit into the system, and it's worked perfectly. System players over glamour players, I suppose. But I do think we're going to get a very, very interesting week and a half uh, coming up, and uh, I think a lot of clubs are going to be going into the market. Um, and maybe you know this Bernardo Silva Barcelona thing still still happens. I mean, he looked very good for Man City yesterday. Can Man City afford to lose that? I think there's a vulnerability to Man City. I predicted they're going to win the league, but I don't think they're as good as last year. And um, I don't think their squad is either. So it could be an interesting week and a half left. Thanks everyone for watching. Get your comments in below. And um, yeah, uh, well done to Arsenal, the big winners of the weekend, top of the league and looking to... I, I, always, I always said this when United were good and Roy Keane used to say it as well. When you're at the top, be ambitious. Don't stand still. And Arsenal are top of the league and they're being ambitious going for players. It's the best thing you can do. Thanks everyone for watching. Make sure you subscribe, bottom right hand corner and smash a like. And don't forget, United stand tonight for the watch along. Liverpool's visit to Old Trafford. It's going to be very interesting on many ways, on and off the pitch. Uh, make sure you tune into United stand tonight. Thanks for watching.